Hello, audience. Well, um, I hope you had a good lunch because we decided just to switch the speech a little so that everything stays warm. And I'm now here with the job to present two things, Osmium and the worst English accent, um, German accent in English that you ever heard. So I do my very best. So let's start with this little metal here. This is a newspaper from Spain. And um, I'll just show you some of the things that they are doing uh, in the newspapers in Germany and other countries, because uh, some of you might never have heard about Osmium, and it appears to people to be new. What is not is. It is um, a couple of billion years old, and it has been for a long time on the planet. And um, it is one of the eight Nobel medals. It is the last of the Nobel medals that will be introduced to the market. And this depends on a couple of interesting things. By the way, this is what it looks like on the right-hand side. And we do have a booth over there. And if you like to see Osmium and maybe feel it a little, you can just come over and join the Osmium experience. So our job is to inform people. So we're traveling the world, and we're just doing things like that. We give information about Osmium, because Osmium used to be a toxic substance, and this for a long time. So um, in 1804, Smith and Tennant discovered the element, and it uh, produced an oxide which is toxic. So osmium hasn't been uh, produced um, for the market. It has been used in medicine and a couple of other things, like in bulbs of Osram, you might have heard that. And um, people were not able to put it to the market, to the, to the investor's market, etc. So what happened then was that uh, osmium was crystallized, starting with the osmium sponge. So all of you know diamonds. A diamond is just carbon crystallized to a diamond. And the osmium sponge gets crystallized to be osmium in this crystalline disk form. And after this process, it is not toxic anymore. So what is the job of the Osmium Institute? Usually, if you are in this business, you don't have to do with institutes, because we're doing scientific work. My job at the headquarters in Germany is to certify the osmium. So it comes from the mines, let's say from Canada or from um, Kazakhstan or from South Africa, goes to Switzerland, is crystallized there, crosses the border to Germany, and in Germany it is certified. Because every crystal of osmium has a special structure. And this is like a fingerprint to the osmium so that you always will find your particular piece. And we do the scan of every particular piece of osmium. And this is how it is packed. So you can compare it a little with diamonds, but there are a lot of diamonds, a big number, and there will be the new um, man-made diamonds too, tons of them. But osmium is very, very rare, and I'm going to give you some ideas about that. Let's start with the purity. Usually, you buy gold in a 4.9er purity. If you work with osmium, it is at least a 5.9er purity. But Osmium is used for the, um, for the measurements. So people who work with measurement machines, like X-ray, etc., they use osmium for their machines um, to be brought to the point. And this is what they do in the uh, XRF spectrometers, and they use osmium to calibrate their machines. This is the purity, very, very high. So osmium got some special characteristics. In German, we say it's an elative. So the best of the best, and uh, it has the highest density of all stable metals. It is the most rare non-radioactive element on the planet. It has the highest abrasion resistance of all elements at all, even higher than diamonds. Um, and it is a shield against gamma rays, so if you try to, to build some kind of an enterprise and go to space, you can coat it with osmium, that's helpful, but we do not have that much osmium, so maybe you find another option to do that, and it becomes a superconductor. Most important thing, it is absolutely not possible to forge osmium. This is how it looks like, and I give you just a small impression what osmium can be. It can be jewelry in small pieces, where you have 0.07 grams of osmium, which might be 100 euro or something like that, and you make small osmium. Or you make jewelry in very, very special designs. So in Italy, in France, they start to do special designs with osmium for the jewelry market. And um, you can coat it with titanium, you can put it in rings, you can have pendants and whatever you like to made out of osmium. 
This is what they call the osmium sparkle. And I'm going to show you with this disk here, because there is a physical thing that a diamond is able to split the light. And osmium is able to reflect the light like that. So what you see here is the osmium sparkle. And I think even, even if you are 10 or 20 meters from here, you can see the osmium sparkle. These are frequencies that will be reflected by sunlight too. So if you do wear osmium on a party instead of diamonds, then you will be seen from a distance of, um, let's say, 10 or 20 meters on this party. So this might be helpful if you want to get seen. So. <laughs> just an option. This is just because of there are perfect little mirrors in and the sunlight that comes down from the sun is absolutely parallel because of the extreme distance it has to travel to earth. And then it goes on a little mirror like that and this mirror is absolutely even. So from there it goes directly to your eye as if you would look directly into the sun. This is why we call it the sunshine element. Okay, so let's go on with that. What happens with osmium after maybe investors bought it, sold it, etc.? Then the final destination of osmium is to end up in some kind of luxury, uh, luxury um, uh, wristwatches or jewelry. And there are a couple of companies who are producing new things. And Ulysse Nardin, based in Switzerland, just brought one of the new wristwatches for 100,000 Switzerland francs. Uh, which is brand new, just a couple of days old. And these are the things you can do. So back to the scientific things. Here is the part of the, of the table, of the periodic table of the elements. You have silver, gold, palladium, platinum, rhodium, iridium, ruthenium, and osmium as the last one. So there will not come a next opportunity. This is the last of the noble methods. And on the complete planet, you'll have nine cubic meters. That is not much, nine cubic meters. Let's say this is a small uh, truck of osmium in the Earth crust. And you can dig out, let's say, approximately two cubic meters. So you can put this in a very small car, which will not be able to drive anymore because of the density of 22.61. So you have 40 tons of osmium in two cubic meters. Um, but just I tell this because it is just to have an idea uh, how rare it is, yes? It is just those 44,000 kilograms, two cubic meters of osmium in the complete Earth crust, and it might happen, what they call in uh, the US the osmium Big Bang, that osmium will run out completely. And if osmium is gone, we got to see what will happen. Um, so counterfeiting, um, I just give you an idea why it is not possible to, um, to, to forge osmium. So usually in gold, uh, you put some tungsten in, then gold in the surrounding, you sell it at the gold bar. That's helpful because you make some money out of tungsten. Great idea. You did it already? <laughs> what did you make in terms of money? So with osmium, this is not possible. First of all, if you put something in, it will melt before the osmium, even if it is tungsten. Second, um, the density is so high of the osmium that you cannot find a material that has the same density to put it in. And the third thing is, you cannot reproduce the crystalline structure, because the crystalline structure is in a database. And in this database, you can see the crystalline structure. This is just two millimeters. And here is the crystalline structure from where we figure out if osmium is false or not. These are the semi-manufactured products made out of osmium. And if you go to real products that you're going to sell, then you'll have a couple of things um, like these rings on the left-hand side, or like the, uh, the forms or, let's say, shapes for the jewelry industry. So international lounge, we did it four and a half years ago. We called it an international lounge. It started in Germany, in Bavaria. Very international. Don't laugh. <laughs> okay, but now it is 31 countries. We are on four con continents, and people try to get a little interest in osmium. Now, this is why we travel now and give this information. So, this is how, to, how it uh, can be cut by wire erosion, and you see how good these cuttings are. So, you'll have an extreme quality, what is not possible to get with other metals, so you can do spectacular things with that. Most important thing, the osmium database. 
The audit of Osmium database is in the responsibilities of the Osmium institutes. And this is just one database. You don't have to take pictures. You're allowed to, but you don't have to because you get the presentation for free. Not a problem at all. So whatever you want to have, it is free because it is our job to inform you. Because it might happen that some people will try to forge Osmium, so you need to know that there is a particular number in the database. This is here. You can see this little number. If you type that in on osmium-identification-code.com, a long address I know, but if you type it in, then you see what would be the price if this particular piece would be produced on this particular day. So this is what you can see there, and a couple of other things about the osmium. So if you want to sell the osmium someday, and the buyer wants to know whether this is true osmium, you just type in the number, and all of you will see that this is this particular piece of osmium. Very easy with the osmium identification code. Maybe it will happen that someday you want to give the osmium to your children. You decide, well, tomorrow is a good day. I want to die tomorrow. And <laughs> you laugh again. You might die tomorrow. <laughs> so if you want to do that, you can change with the owner change code every piece of osmium to another owner, which is very easy to do in the internet. So what do we have for opportunities with osmium now? Um, as you can see here, the most interesting thing is it's strongly limited. Well, that is very an interesting thing. Um, cost two cubic meters, that is not much. And another couple of things that are interesting. For example, storage. You can store osmium without ever any problem. Um, you can transport osmium without any problem. You can cross borders, and it has the highest value density of all materials. So you can put a one-family home in your pocket in terms of osmium. So availability, where can you buy it? How can you buy it? Um, it is semi-finished products that you can get into Australia um, with under special conditions, which is great. Thank you, Australia, for that. And this is the osmium bars and discs and the family office disc. And I can show you some of those things because you need to be familiar with the products. This, for example, is a family office disc with a diameter of 12.5 centimeters. This is a usual disc with a diameter of 50 millimeters. And um, these are the, pro the products with the largest geometries that we have. So there you can make a lot of, um, of jewelry out. So this is one of the discs for a family office box. And this is the box. So this box has um, 1.6 million Australian dollar if you buy the box with the eight discs in. Um, Osmium diamonds are small and tiny and lightweight. So these are the things that everybody can afford. So if you'd like to have something easy to start in the osmium business, you can do it like that. And these are osmium diamonds. We scale them a little, because in the real world, it's three millimeters like the star rows here, which is some kind of a split bar. A star row, you can break. And if you break it, it's the same thing as if you split a big gold bar into single grams. Whoops. This was the wrong button. OK. So osmium star rows, you can use as split bars. Um, but we can do every form that you want to have. So whatever you like to be cut out of the osmium, um, we can do that for you in via erosion. And this, for example, is a thing like that. And here you can see wonderful the crystalline structure. And this is, for example, made for a wristwatch. And these are the packages where osmium is in. And this is the osmium pearl. This is some kind of a secret. Because um, the production of a three-dimensional object, excuse me, can we go back? Or can I do that? Yes. Um, so, this is a structure which is three-dimensional, and this is a problem with osmium, because you'll have to coat something with osmium, and the temperatures are very high, and the pressures are very, very high. So, this is the most complicated thing to do in terms of fabrication, and that is why there is just one pearl on the planet now, and we think that in two years we will be able to produce 10, 20, 30 a year, and we're going to inform you about that on the next conference. So if you want to see something, you can go to these websites. Uh, we have a TV channel, of course. And um, this is the end of the presentation. And <laughs> yeah.